did did not realize that that was my husband when I married. Didn't know for quite a while that that was Jack. He was 18 at the time, and I was a seventh grader. My dad used to always have the radio on in the in his little grocery store in our town of 500, and I can remember listening to WNAX out of in Yankton, South Dakota. So. I go, I graduate from high school, go off into nursing school, and uh, I want a good life, so I decide I want to travel, so I join the Army Nurse Corps, and I am sent to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. There I meet, or I listen, to this guy on the hospital radio station, and it comes to be Jack Reno. And Jack and I ended up getting married in 1961, December 3rd. From there, our life went very rapidly. It went very fast. We got out of the military. Uh, I had um, our first child was Randy. He was, and he he lives here in Boone County. He and his wife do, and that. And uh, we moved to Clinton, Illinois. Now this was really a fun place because Jack used to have to go down and get the newspaper. Clinton, Illinois was probably about 1,800 people. So he was on this little station called WHOO. And he would have to run down and get the newspaper, run back up and give the new, read the news off the newspaper <laughs> for the radio station. And uh, we were living there, and I had, then I, that's when I had my second little boy. They were 13 months apart, and Gary now lives in Chicago. But another interesting part that I remember Jack always saying is, we had somebody on uh, the radio station, and he came on every Saturday, and his name was Reverend Dove. And he would preach on there, and he'd say, Send your money now if you want to keep Martha on the piano, and he'd go on like that. And Jack said he'd go down to the airport, uh, down to the um, post office, and there he'd see Reverend Dove looking at the envelopes. Okay, <laughs> no check there. Check went there. So that was part of our time. We were, we were in Clinton, Illinois, for six months. So now we go on to uh, Davenport, Iowa. Jack is on in Davenport, Iowa, and that is in that is going to be in 1960. Gary was six. Uh, Gary was it was 64. So it's 65. We're in Davenport, Iowa, just in time for the floods. And at that time, then Jack was on the radio. He was on KWMT in Davenport, Iowa, and all this time. Now, see, I haven't unpacked anything. Okay, I'm not really sure we're staying too long. So he was on there, and it was a big flood. The Mississippi overcome, and Jack is now being told that I just found some uh, old um, videos of Jack crossing in a boat over to KWMT to do his recordings and do his radio show there. And he went all across the nation. My family up in Portland, Oregon even heard it. And they called me and said, is that your husband, Jack Reno? Yeah, it is. That's Jack. And he was recording. He was telling about that. We're in Davenport, Iowa for nine months. We are now headed to Lubbock, Texas. K Triple L. And there is Waylon Jennings, Don Bowman, Jack, and uh, Waylon Jennings is just now leaving KLLL as a disc jockey, and he is going to go on the road with Buddy Holly. He's going to be the lead guitar player. So uh, we're there in Lubbock, Texas, and Jack is on KLLL. It is a death sentence for me. It does, it blows sand constantly, if you've ever been in, the, in that part of Texas. It has nothing but little tiny blobs. There's no grass. They plant these little things. And I called them Gila monsters. I was scared to death for the rest of them, for my children, because these little things would run all around. So we are now, Jack goes to Austin, Texas, and records Big Big Man. He records, the, he records an album. 
Um, I did forget to tell you that while we're in the service, our honeymoon, when I married Jack, our honeymoon was spent in Nashville, Tennessee, with him recording his very first recording, which was blue. And it was kind of a rock. Um, it was blue, my knees turned to jelly, come back. And my knees turned to jelly was turned down by Elvis. And then Jack's, that was one of Jack's songs that he sang. And Blue was play, oh, it went to the number five in the nation on the pop records. I forgot to tell you that. So, and he recorded a song called Nine Stitches and it was right after I had Gary. So, so that was interesting. So now we're in Lubbock, Texas. We've been there nine months. We're on the road again. And now we're going to Peoria, Illinois. And we're, uh, we're at our station in, in Peoria, Illinois, and here is where things happen. Jack recorded, he had a real good, there was a secretary at the uh, station, and uh, she loved to hear Jack sing. Jack was singing a lot in Galesburg, Illinois. He was doing a lot of, a lot of shows, and um, plus being on the radio. And uh, he did a uh, commercial. And it was in Nashville, it was for a grocery store in Nashville, Tennessee, and it was called a Big, Big, Big Deal, Big, Big, Big Deal, the biggest deal in this here town. And it was for this um, uh, grocery store. So Buddy Killen out of Tree Publishing heard this commercial, wanted to know who this guy was. His kids were driving him crazy. They loved this tune. And so Jack got a call from Buddy Killen out of Nashville. And the rest was history. He got a recording contract with Decca Records. And he recorded, his songs are back there. Uh, he then recorded for Target Records, which was Hitch and a Ride. He had uh, It's Only Make Believe. That, way, it, that was first sung, that was by Conway Twitty at the beginning. But then Jack had that. Uh, he had um, many, many songs. Sang, he was on the Porter Wagner show. I uh, got a picture back there with him with Dolly. I did question him why his hand was up so high when he was holding on to Dolly. Um, he told me there was no, nowhere else to go except up, and he didn't think he should do that. So, anyway, uh, he was on that Porter Wagner show. Uh, actually, he was on the Midwestern Hayride here in Cincinnati, too. He and Kenny Price were very good friends. Actually, he told me when Kenny Price died, he said, he went to that and he said, when I die, he said, I want a funeral just like Kenny. He said, that was a happening with Lulu and everybody. He said, that was absolutely awesome. I can remember when he came back and told me that. So Jack did a lot of that. Jack, while we were here, at the age of 42, developed Hodgkin's disease. And that's when he was on LW, on the All Night Trucker Show, which was all over the nation. Uh, he used to get calls from shrimp boats offshore and everything, but he did all that. So he got Hodgkin's disease, and I have to say that the truckers probably saved his life because they put out a plea over the radio that Jack needed blood, and truckers were stopping. He ended up with the most blood that they had ever received at a Jewish hospital for anybody, and we gave all of the blood that he didn't have on to that. So he had Hodgkin's disease, and he had kind of a hard time. Then he recorded VB Indiana here, 14 miles from VB Indiana, which did very, very well. He opened up a radio station called K, uh, WKFB in Florence, Kentucky. And then Elmer writes, he used to do a lot of shows at the racetrack back at when the Pataglia boys were there, and it was called uh, Latonia. So uh, the Pataglia boys, and then um, it was also Andy Furman from WLW, if you remember Andy Furman. But Elmer Wright did a lot with Jack, with bringing in country music to the, to the uh, Latonia Lit racetrack. And Elmer one day told Jack, how would you like to be a sheriff of Boone County? He said, like Kenny Price, you bet. So they hired him, and Jack worked there until he retired. And then um, he retired in 1999 after he'd been at the, at the Sheriff's Department for four, uh, 13 years. And we had five good years in Florida, and he died three years ago. Uh, it'll be November 1st. 
but we had a good life, and my daughter Sheila is here. She's here with her children. She, she lives here. So we had three children. I have wonderful grandchildren, and I've threatened every one of them that I do not want great grands at this time. <laughs> memories and we're hearing other sides of the people that you hear on records and hear on TV and all and I'm so appreciative of all of them coming and of all the memorabilia they have brought with them. Next is a man, a musician, born on a farm. He went to Florence School for a while I suppose this was one of the reasons that the re record Sheriff of Boone County became such a hit, as he had personal knowledge of many of the sheriffs of Boone <laughs> County. <laughs> you know, Donna Price has said she would be here tonight, and she has come with, I think, some of her family and she has a lot of things back there. And Donna, I'm going to ask you to come up and share some <laughs> stories of our own round mound of sand. <laughs> My goodness, how will I ever follow that? <laughs> You're wonderful, both of you. So I can't tell you anything that most everybody here don't already know about Kenny. Because some way, Kenny has touched every life of everybody here, I know. He went to grade school here. He loved Boone County better than life. And it's funny that I'm here uh, with the Historical Society because Kenny loved history. Anybody knew him? Loved history. Civil War. On our honeymoon, he took me to the Civil War battlefield in Chickamauga. <laughs> and we read tombstones all day. And I'm thinking, is this really what it's all about? Doing this on your honeymoon? But that's what we did. And it's, we had a really good life. We uh, started out in Boone County, stayed in Boone County, and Kenny passed away in Boone County. We raised our three children here. Kenny uh, went to the military, went to the Army, and he was in the 2nd Infantry Division and in Korea, and he maintained and operated bulldozers. And he decided that when he came out of the Army, he had to find something easier to do. And he wasn't going to be working on bulldozers. And he didn't want to work on his dad's farm because that was too hard. So he decided, I'm going to pick up the guitar and I'm going to sing. That's easier. So that's what he did. Uh, a gentleman asked him, a guy that wrote uh, uh, Walking on Newgrass, bet him $5.00 to audition for WLW's Midwestern Hayride. And he took it. And he started out and he sang three notes and they said, you're hired. <laughs> Kenny bragged that he only had two jobs in his life. 18 years at WLW Midwestern Hayride and 25 years for Hee Haw. So he did really good. He liked the job, he stayed there and didn't see any reason to move on. We, uh, we lived on La Cresta. The day we moved in there, we lived there 33 years. The day that we moved in there, Kenny said, I love it here, and when I, uh, next time I leave here, they're gonna take me out feet first. And that's exactly what they did. He had all kinds of offers to go to uh, Nashville, and he didn't, that was something he did not wanna do. He said, I love the people.